Nearly seven months after 7 October, the situation for people in Gaza is worsening by the day. I've called consistently for a humanitarian ceasefire, the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages, and the massive surge in humanitarian aid. Unfortunately, that has not happened yet. But negotiations are once again underway. For the sake of the people of Gaza, for the sake of the hostages and their families in Israel, and for the sake of the region and the wider world, I strongly encourage the government of Israel and the Hamas leadership to reach now an agreement. Recent weeks have seen airstrikes on the Rafah area. A military assault on Rafah would be an unbearable escalation, killing thousands more civilians and forcing hundreds of thousands to flee. It would have a devastating impact on Palestinians in Gaza, with serious repercussions on the occupied West Bank and across the wider region. A major obstacle to distributing aid across Gaza is the lack of security for humanitarians and the people we serve. Humanitarian convoys, facilities and personnel and people in need must not be targets. We welcome aid delivery by air and sea, but there is no alternative to the massive use of land routes. I again call on the Israeli authorities to allow and facilitate safe, rapid and unimpeded access for humanitarian aid and humanitarian workers, including UNRWA, throughout Gaza. We recognize the irreplaceable and indispensable work of UNRWA to support millions of people in Gaza, the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, Jordan, Syria and Lebanon. Following the report by Ms. Catherine Colonna on mechanisms and procedures to ensure UNRWA's adherence to the humanitarian principle of neutrality, an action plan is being put in place to implement the recommendations of the report. I appeal to donors, host countries and staff to cooperate with this effort. Some hospitals now resemble cemeteries. I'm deeply alarmed by reports that mass graves have been discovered in several locations in Gaza, including Al Shifa Medical Complex and Nasser Medical Complex. In Nasser alone, over 390 bodies have reportedly been exhumed. There are competing narratives around several of these mass graves, including serious allegations that some of those buried were unlawfully killed. It is imperative that independent international investigators with forensic expertise are allowed the immediate access to the sites of these mass graves to establish the precise circumstances under which hundreds of Palestinians lost their lives and were buried or reburied.